Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Gregory Pokorny from Langara College in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, thank you for tuning in to this info session uh, IEFT Talks webinar. Um, as I said, my name is Gregory Pokorny, and I am working for Langara College. And it's a pl pl uh, privilege to be here and uh, giving delivering this uh, webinar and giving you some more information about Langara College. So thank you very much. I have about 45 minutes and then I think there's some time for some questions. Uh, but uh, at the end of the presentation, I will take the questions. So again, thank you for tuning in and uh, it is a pleasure to be here and I hope uh, I can give you some information about Langara College. So shall we begin? Okay, so today um, presentation, I'm gonna talk about uh, why studying in Canada, or you know, specifically why studying at Langara? Uh, some high demand occupations, uh, education plans, programs at Langara, and how to apply to Langara, and then some, as I said, some uh, questions at the end. So when we ask here why study in Canada, I think many of you are familiar where Canada is. And uh, many, maybe some of you have visited Canada or have been here. Maybe some of you haven't. Maybe you've been here to uh, to take a course, or you've talking on a maybe taking a business trip, or taking a vacation with your family. Or some of you maybe haven't been to Canada. So, uh, give some reasons here why uh, Canada is a good study destination. So, first of all, in Canada. Uh, there's a very high quality of education across the whole country. So not just in, you know, um, urban areas or rural areas. It's pretty standard across Canada from East Coast uh, through the central area uh, right to the West Coast. And uh, also students are eligible for work permit after they graduate. So uh, the Canadian government has made this kind of policy where students can come to Canada and they can uh, they can study and do their two-year degree or four-year degree or master's degree or post uh, post degree diploma and then after they are eligible to stay in Canada use what they've learned in the classroom uh, to get a you know get a work permit and work in Canada so to apply what they've learned and there's a very high quality of life in Canada as well so usually Canada ranks pretty highly as far as uh, quality of life, um, you know, work-life uh, balance, uh, you know, the lifestyle is uh, pr pretty high quality as well. So just uh, some uh, pointers here about uh, some of the demographics about Canada. I mean, maybe some of you know this, you can see the whole map there. Uh, Canada is the second largest country as far as land mass is concerned uh, with a population of only about 36 million. So I, I'm, I think I'm pretty sure Turkey has more than 36 million in a much smaller country. So uh, the median age is just over 40 and uh, GDP is around the 10th uh, largest in the world. Unemployment, uh, now keep in mind, this is pre COVID-19 uh, statistics. So this unemployment rate 5.6 is probably a, a quite a bit higher right now because uh, the pan, uh, COVID-19 pandemic where a lot of businesses have closed and it's hurt the economy quite a bit. So, but uh, usually the unemployment will stay steady around 5% um, when times are normal. Now, the three metropolitan areas, you can see Toronto. Uh, Toronto is the biggest. And if I, I don't know if you can see my cursor here, but uh, it's right down here in Southwestern Ontario. And then you have uh, Montreal, which is in Quebec. Uh, with 4.1 million. Uh, Toronto, I said, is close to 6 million. Montreal, 4.1. And then you have Vancouver, where Langara is located with 2.5 million. And Vancouver is way over here on the, uh, in British Columbia on the West Coast. So living and working in and studying in Vancouver, I mean, you're not in a small village. <clears throat> I mean, it's not as big as uh, the cities there, in, um, like uh, Istanbul or Ankara, not that big, but uh, it's still a pretty... Uh, big uh, city in Canada, so 2.5 million. And then the whole greater Vancouver area, uh, there's a, probably close to 4 million, including the suburbs. So as I mentioned, uh, Vancouver is the third largest metropolitan area in Canada. 
uh, the regional population, including Vancouver and the surrounding uh, suburb cities, uh, 4.8 million. Uh, median age is around 42. Unemployment, as I said, pre-COVID-19, 4%. And then you can see the surrounding cities, including Burnaby, Coquitlam, Richmond, Surrey, North Vancouver. Now, in Vancouver, I have this slide here talking about the high demand occupations. And these include, some of these are, you know, not spread out totally across Canada, but in British Columbia, in Vancouver, uh, you know, areas such as accounting, auditing, IT, uh, computer programming, um, the interactive media, inter, uh, media development, all the businesses, finance, accounting, business management, advertising, marketing, and then there's also a fledging uh, web design development and also animation, animation uh, industry as well. Okay, so getting into the education plans, uh, this uh, picture that you see there, uh, this has the a picture of the campus from one of the buildings there. And getting into the education plans in Canada, uh, <clears throat> in Canada, you know, similar to probably in Turkey, the university, like a four-year bachelor's degree, uh, usually that's the undergraduate bachelor's degree. So you finish high school, you go to university, you take a bachelor's degree. In Canada, that bachelor's degree is four years. Uh, in Canada, in some of the provinces, including British Columbia, we have the associate degree, which is a two-year degree. And then you can see also certificate, one year, usually a one-year certificate, and then diploma, two-year diploma. Now, this part here where it says associate degree, two years, and then you see onward university degree, two years. What this means is you can come to like a, a college like Langara, where you're doing the associate degree for the first two years, and then you're using those credits that you've earned to transfer to the university to finish your year three and year four. So it's like a two plus two, two years at the college doing your associate degree, all those credits transfer so that when you transfer, you transferring into third year of the at the university. And then you just do your year three and your year four and you get your bachelor's degree. So that's why we have the two arrows here, associate degree, then onward to university degree. So certificate, as I mentioned, could be one year, diploma, a two-year diploma. And then after that graduating, then you go working, you, you go to work. Um, in your career, get a job, and then you start making, uh, earning money. Uh, the post-degree diploma, diploma. now, <clears throat> this could be one or two years, and Langara has these post-degree diplomas. And uh, at the college level in Canada, uh, we cannot, uh, the colleges do not administer master's degrees. So if you're primarily looking for a master's degree, you have to get a master's degree, then you cannot get the master's degree at a college. You do have to go to university to get the master's. Now, what the college does have is the post-degree diploma, and that's what Langara does have. If you go to the university, yes, you can get your master's degree. Yes, you can continue on with your PhD or postdoc. Uh, but if you're looking for these kind of master's, PhD, postdoc at Langara, I'm sorry, I can't help you. It's, uh, you know, we just, as a college, we don't administer those programs. The college does have the post-degree diploma, which I'll talk about in later slides. Okay, so Langara College is, a, is a, some information about Langara itself. Uh, it's a public community college, and it's located in the heart of Vancouver. So right in, uh, very centrally located. Our uh, logo or uh, kind of uh, tagline is start here and go anywhere. So you can start at Langara, as I mentioned in the previous slides, you start at Langara your studies, you can get an associate degree, you can get a diploma, then you move on to the next step in your education or in your work, your work career. Uh, this picture is of the downtown core. So as I said, um, Vancouver is located right on the west coast. So you have the ocean, you have the North Shore Mountains uh, surrounded by water. So this slide here, when you see, when I, when I told you this is the downtown core, where I'm circling here downtown, that's the previous slide. So that's this here, so just to give you some context. So this is showing here the, um, the map of Vancouver and Burnaby, and you can see Richmond as well. So that's where the airport is. You have the downtown, which I just showed you in the previous slide. 
and you have the these kind of purple these kind of uh color lines are the sky train lines so the the metro and <clears throat> We have here downtown and you have the Vancouver Airport, International Airport, and then centrally located right here is Langara College. And it's, uh, you can see this kind of uh, SkyTrain station. So it's called Langara 49th Avenue. So you get off at that station, uh, you walk five to seven minutes and you're on the campus. And so it's very, you know, it's very convenient for public transportation. Buses go by there, SkyTrain is right nearby. You are about 20 minutes from the airport and you're about 18 minutes from downtown. And you can also see here that we have uh, UBC, uh, University of British Columbia, and we have Simon Fraser University. Uh, UBC is the second biggest university in Canada and uh, with about, um, I think it's 50 to 60,000 students. So it's quite huge. And that's where, you know, it's very globally ranked in the top 50 universities in the world. And that's where a lot of students want to go to. And that's where a lot of students from Langara will start their education journey at Langara and then get secure the credits, get the GPA that they need and then transfer to UBC. We also have Simon Fraser University, which is uh, SFU for short, it's located in Burnaby and it's the second biggest university in British Columbia. So obviously UBC is the biggest because it's the, as I said, it's the second biggest in Canada. Uh, but SFU is the second biggest in British Columbia and also a lot of our students uh, transfer to SFU uh, just because of the location. Once they're in Vancouver, uh, they do like to stay in Vancouver for their studies. So they have very two very good options in UBC and SFU. Uh, Langara is very, as I mentioned, short distance to downtown, uh, UBC, uh, the airport, YVR, and Metrotown. Metrotown is one of the biggest shopping uh, malls or complexes. It's located in Burnaby in this area right here. Um, you know, you can easily get to Metrotown uh, by bus or by SkyTrain. Okay, so the student profile <clears throat> at Lingera, for domestic students, uh, the Canadian students, we have about 11,000 students. Now, this, these stats are at any given time. So it could be a one to intake. It's not the total students for the whole year, uh, but on campus, either in, in the uh, winter camp, uh, winter or spring, summer or fall. Uh, international students comprise of about 4,500 students. And we have students from over 90 countries represented on campus. Uh, now, I will talk a little bit later about the uh, COVID-19 because obviously that's going to change the dynamic on campus. Um, already just yesterday, Langara uh, College announced that uh, most, a lot of the courses will be delivered online in the fall just because of the uh, uncertainty about travel uh, and so on. So these numbers may not be a reflection of this fall, but uh, they certainly were a reflection in earlier um, in January and February before everything uh, got crazy with the uh, pandemic. So just some pictures here, um, you know, uh, Vancouver is, uh, just to give you a little bit of information about the weather, we do have, a um, you know, uh, experience all four seasons and, you know, including winter, uh, spring, summer, fall. Um, the winter is, you know, when you compare the winter weather uh, across Canada, it can vary quite a bit. And uh, Vancouver, because it's on the West Coast, it's probably got the mildest winter weather in Canada. So when I'm talking about mild, I mean, it's all it's all uh, uh, relative. So, you know, what might be cold and, you know, or mild in Canada may be, seem very cold to people in other countries, but we're looking at a kind of average temperature in the winter time around uh, three to five degrees. And yes, we do get some snow. You can see the one picture there. Uh, so it may snow uh, a few times during the winter and it may uh, stay on the ground for a bit, but usually it's not the same blistering cold that uh, you get in other parts of Canada. So other parts of Canada can average uh, minus 10, minus 15, minus 20 uh, during the winter, throughout the winter where Lang uh, Vancouver rarely hits, uh, you know, I, I think since I've been living here, it's uh, it's uh, rarely hit uh, minus 10. So usually you're looking at around zero, three degrees, five degrees in the winter. And then of course, uh, spring, summer and fall. 
Now, <clears throat> one thing I should mention is um, because we don't get a lot of snow in the winter, and you do get these temperatures where it's maybe three to five degrees in the winter, uh, what does happen is we do get quite a bit of rain. Uh, so that can be our kind of uh, winter weather where we're getting uh, more rain than we are getting snow because it just doesn't uh, get below freezing. So you will experience some rain and you can see like people carrying an umbrella. So that's kind of, that's needed at times. Okay, so just a picture of our campus. Uh, <clears throat> It's a little bit uh, boring how we label the buildings, but uh, you know we have A, B, C, D, uh, and then you can see library and the T building. T building is the newest uh, addition, and I have a picture of that. But A building, uh, this was the original Langara, and they built around this. B is where most of the business uh, courses, business uh, Langara School of Management. Uh, C is um, also classrooms, uh, Langara Student Union building, uh, gymnasium. Uh, over here, you have the um, the daycare and a big, huge library, and of course the T building technology. So this is where we house the uh, most of the science labs. So biology, chemistry, physics, nursing, uh, kinesiology, uh, and so on. And you can see here, uh, you know, all these kind of um, different. Uh, points are labeled. We have a medical clinic on campus with a doctor there, athletics, as I mentioned, gymnasium, daycare, restaurants, coffee shops, cafeteria, counseling, library. So this picture is actually, this, this here is the library. So when I go back to this slide here, um, the next slide is like maybe the picture is taken right about from here and looking straight ahead. So this is the library, which you see right in front of you right here. Um, interesting note here, uh, you may be wondering, okay, uh, you see this statue and you see this kind of uh, language down here and it doesn't look like English because it's not English, but I'll uh, just give you a little bit of backstory about that. So the name of, uh, the name, of course, the name of our college is called Langara College and we call this the College of Higher Learning. This name here that uh, is hard to read is uh, pronounced Snowway at Lelam. And this means in the Muskiam or, you know, indigenous people in their language, it means uh, the um, house of teachings. And basically where the Langara campus is situated in Vancouver is formerly where the Muskiam indigenous um, uh, people lived. So what Langara decided to do is because our college is on that unceded territory of the Muskiam people, they decided, okay, we'll ask the Muskegon people to give Langara uh, a, a name. So they asked uh, the Muskegon people to give the name and they came up with this name Snowway at Lelam. And it fit in with the uh, you know, College of Higher Learning, House of Higher Teachings. So what Langara then decided to do is they would officially co-brand the college. So what that means is that on our presentations, on our business cards, we do have the both names officially. So Langara, and then Snowway at Lelam. And when we officially co-branded the college, then the Muskegon uh, people decided, well, as a, as a gesture for that, we will, um, you know, hand make, hand make this uh, carving statue, which you see here. And it's quite big, it's quite large, as you can see from the picture. And it sits on our campus, it's like the trademark or landmark on campus. So uh, this is, uh, you know, there, I think from two or three years ago. So it's it's been on campus and that's the story behind this. And uh, most people meet here, there's benches here where they can sit and have coffee and so on. So just a little bit of um, um, extra information for you. Okay, so this picture is uh, some pictures here. This is the T building. So when I went back here, I showed you this is where the science labs are, the T building. So this is the newest building that's been built. And that's this building right here. And you can see inside one of the uh, labs. So uh, could be chemistry or biology and um, you know, showing that. We also, <clears throat> Langara also, sorry about my slides here. Uh, Langara also has a, a nursing faculty. Uh, this is for, uh, for the undergrad nursing for domestic students. And then we also have the post-degree diploma nursing practice in Canada, which I'll talk about in, in, um, in, the, in later slides. 
Okay, so just some other pictures here. You can see this is the one of the pictures of the computer lab. Uh, you, you know, students using that uh, for classes, for their assignments. Uh, one of the lecture halls. Now, <clears throat> when I talk about lecture hall, you have to keep in mind that Langara keeps the class size to a minimum 40 students or less, primarily for about 95% of the classes. Uh, Langara does have a couple first year economics courses that have about 70 or 75 students, and they may sit in this, this kind of classroom. This is about the biggest classroom you'll see. Uh, but most of the classes in Langara, we keep the class size 40 students or less. So you're, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, if you're sitting in a class in some of the big universities, you may be sitting in a class with 200, 300 uh, students in a lecture hall, the professor is very far away. Uh, but at Langara, we keep the class size pretty minimum to 40 students. So you get a lot of interaction with your classmates and you get a lot of interaction with the instructor. Okay, so for the Co-op um, and Career Development Center, this is very uh, popular and very useful center on campus. So <clears throat> the Co-op and Career Development Center, um, you know, this center is important because a lot of Langara courses have a co-op option or even have uh, co-op as a mandatory part of the program. They also have, uh, you know, um, workshops that are there uh, where they can, you know, get uh, workshops about resume building, interview skills, uh, networking. Um, they also have at the Langara Career and Development uh, Co-op Development Center, they also have the online job board. And this job board is only for Langara students. So if the student does have to take a co-op or a work experience term, then they go there and they can find all the listings of the jobs. They get information about how to interview, how to write their resume, because you know, how you interview or the work culture in Turkey uh, it could be quite a bit different than how you interview or how you apply for a job in Canada and what the expectations are. So they give you a lot of this information. So there's, this uh, center is used a lot by a lot of by students because this is the way that they can learn, okay, uh, job interviews, uh, how to network, uh, how to, you know, um, you know, write the resume, um, you know, cover letters, uh, even take, um, you know, they have the sessions where they take your LinkedIn photo and so on like that. Um, so they, you know, and they also have this leaders program, networking events. Um, once, uh, uh, once a month, they have these morning mingle. So it's uh, where they invite the uh, people from industry, from companies to come and they meet Langara students. It's a way to kind of build, build those network opportunities. And uh, also job fair. So the Co-op and Career Development Center also hosts every semester a job fair. So they have uh, employers like banks, financial companies, engineering companies, uh, you know, retail, supply chain, uh, you know, a lot of different industries in Vancouver and they invite those industry leaders uh, and then they have a fair where they meet the Langara graduates or people that are in their last semester. And this is a way that they can learn about jobs and also apply for jobs. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is shows, uh, you know, like we have a students, as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, 4,500 international students from over 90 countries, uh, you know, including Turkey, including other parts of Europe, Asia, uh, Africa, Latin America, of course, uh, and so on. So a lot of um, during the during the year, academic year, we have a lot of cultural events. <clears throat> so where we, you know, because we have so many students from different countries, so they may share part of their culture. So this is just a picture taken for the Chinese or Lunar New Year, and they have performances and then give some kind of info session or give some talk, share some food, um, you know, a culture like that. So students can learn from each other. So this is just a picture showing from the, uh, the Chinese or the Lunar New Year uh, event. And this could also, um, you know, go into for, you know, Indian Diwali. It could go for Persian New Year uh, and so on like that. 
Clubs are very important. I think there's over uh, 45 different clubs on campus. So you can see here like the banner, join a new club, meet new people, start a new club, get involved. So it's a way that students, you know, whatever your interest is, you know, if it's, uh, you know, art or if it's, uh, you know, volunteering or if it's, uh, you know, environments, things to do with the environment, uh, whatever, you know, arts and crafts, whatever your interest is, there's usually a club for that. Uh, language clubs and so on like that so you know we have at the beginning of every semester they have like you know these booths and tables set up where students can learn about different clubs sign up and get involved and that gets gets them to meet new people and then and then uh, you know gets them more enjoy the the overseas learning experience sports uh, so Langara does have sports teams uh, we play other colleges and universities so, you know, the three main sports are uh, soccer or football uh, for male and female. And then also we have the uh, basketball and also I believe the other sport is badminton. So male and female uh, team sports. And as I said, they play against other colleges, universities in the lower mainland and in the province. And uh, so, yeah, these are student athletes. I mean, they're, they are taking courses. I mean, they are expected to still study and everything. So it's a little bit different than the U.S. system, where the U.S. system gives, uh, you know, uh, big athletic scholarships and so on like that. In Canada, it's a, we do give some funding for sports at Langara. So uh, if you are very good at uh, some sports, I mean, you could get in contact with me and then I could point you into the, the, um, the athletic managers or directors uh, for further um, further information. So, but yeah, we do have the uh, sports such as soccer and basketball and badminton for male and female. Okay, so turning our attention to the programs now that are offered at Langara. I've given a lot of information, general information about the Vancouver City and Langara campus and Canada and so on. Now getting into the programs and what programs that Langara offers. Now, uh, Langara offers university transfer, career diplomas, and I'm gonna talk about each of these in, in, uh, in more detail, post-degree diploma, LEAP, which is Langara's EAP, or English for Academic Purposes, and Continuing Studies programs. For uh, university transfer, or the demographic of the students, uh, you can see there in this slide about 45%, almost half of the students at Lingera are university transfer students. So that uh, mechanism that I showed you earlier where students will do two years at Lingera and then transfer to the university to finish their year three, year four, this is what I'm talking about by university transfer. So what that means is for the university transfer, the students can come to Lingera, and if I give you an example, the students can come to Langara and in British Columbia, in the whole province, all the colleges and all the universities, public and private, their first year and second year, all the courses have been uh, evaluated and articulated, and that means that you can transfer. So the student can go to the uh, uh, British Columbia Transfer Guide, which is a website done by the government. They can put, okay, Langara College, and they can put... Uh, you know, let's say, for example, uh, economics, and they can put economics 100 and hit enter, and they'll see all the colleges, universities in British Columbia with the same course. So they can say, oh, okay, Langara Economics 100, that is the same as uh, University of British Columbia's Economics uh, 105. I'm just giving some examples. So that way the student knows, okay, once they finish the Economics 100 at Langara, they have the credit that will transfer to uh, University of British Columbia or Simon Fraser University or University of Victoria. So it's quite a, a robust system and quite seamless. So this is what a lot of students want to do. And the, the advantage of this is that, uh, you know, it's not easy to get into the big university right away. I mean, they're great education. If you do get into straight into university right away, that's great. Uh, but not every student is going to get in because, you know, there's competing students from all over the world and who are going for the same spots and there's only limited spots. So this way they can come to Langara where it's a little bit, um, you know, maybe a little bit easier to get into Langara. The courses are the same. They're gonna have to study hard, uh, get the GPA and then they can do the transfer and they're still getting the same degree. The other big advantage is cost. 
and I'll get into that a little bit, but the tuition is uh, quite a bit lower at Langara compared to the bigger university. So for example, at Langara, one year could be about $18,000 Canadian a year. Uh, at UBC, you're looking at uh, 45,000 a year. So it's uh, more than double uh, the tuition. So if you're doing two years at Langara, uh, you know, you're saving yourself significant uh, tuition costs. We also have career, baccalaureate, um, post degree, we also uh, post degree, as I mentioned, and then continuing studies. So this is the just some information about the university transfer, which I've just explained. So it's open enrollment. Uh, you start at Langara, you transfer the credits, you complete your degree at the university. Um, it's the largest transfer institution to UBC um, and SFU in the lower mainland. And you can see here on this next slide. So this is a little bit, um, the data is not, it's been updated to 2015, which is still the same trend. But uh, you can see here, like um, during the time, uh, over 2000 students from Langara went to SFU. Uh, 2003, almost 2400 went to UBC. Uh, and, you know, so a total here with all these uh, five universities, Langara sent four, over 5000 uh, students transferred. So that's what Langara does well. That's what it's known for. So as a, as a transfer institution or as a kind of pathway. So these are just some of the programs. These are not all of them, but you know, we have everything in the arts, um, humanities, uh, social sciences, in the sciences. We, this is, of course, we have the foundation sciences, biology, chemistry, physics, uh, mathematics, and then you have health science, bioinformatics, computer science, and so on. Okay, career programs, these are limited enrollment, and usually the, we're talking about two-year degree or two-year diplomas. And they may have some kind of specific requirement and mission requirements, and also you get more kind of practical or more hands-on education. So those are looking, those are students that are looking for something maybe a little bit more specialized and want to just get a two-year degree. They don't want to transfer to the bigger university. So, <clears throat> you know, these are just some of those ones in the, in the career studies. So, you know, a lot of different ones here from the business area, um, you know, animation, design, film, theater, uh, everything, gerontology, uh, study of elderly people, kinesiology, bi library and info technology, and so on. Okay, now our post-degree programs. So post-degree program, these are, like I mentioned earlier at the beginning of my presentation, these are mostly those, uh, po uh, those programs where you already have a degree, you already have your bachelor's degree. So let's say you're in Turkey, you've already finished your bachelor's degree. Now you'd like to go to Canada and get some kind of post-degree or higher diploma. So at Langara, we have the, uh, the two-year post-degree program and it's limited enrollment. You do, the major requirement is you do need an undergraduate degree from your country, like so from Turkey, and they may have some uh, program specific requirements. It's more practical. They're two years in length and there's a work experience. So in the last term, the last four months for many, I think seven of the 10 post-degree diplomas, then they have the work experiential term. So that means you're working for four months in a Canadian company, getting Canadian work experience and, and getting paid. Um, when I put here apply early, uh, this means because uh, we, um, you know, we don't have a huge sizes for the cohort. So I think, for example, business administration is the biggest one and we have about 80, 80 students or 80 to 90 students that are available for that each cohort, uh, but other ones only have 30 to 40. So that's why we say apply early because they do tend to fill up uh, quicker than the other pro programs. So these are our 10 post-degree programs and you can see here accounting, business, marketing, supply chain, web and mobile, your uh, web and mobile app uh, application design or web and mobile application development. Uh, we also have applied planning, web uh, health and safety, environmental compliance, data analytics, and nursing practice in Canada. The last one here, Nursing Practice in Canada, this is open to uh, students who are already have their nursing degree in their home country. So if you're a nurse in Turkey and you 
you know, finished your nursing degree, you may be working in, in the hospital or working um, as a nurse in your home country uh, in Turkey, then you could apply to this program. Uh, and this after the two year program, you get the credentials, uh, you meet all the other requirements and you can be a nurse in British Columbia. Okay, uh, LEAP program, this is Langara's EAP. So those are the students, because each program, we do have the English proficiency requirement. Mostly a lot of students do IELTS or TOEFL. Uh, recently because of COVID, uh, we've accepted uh, from April, we started accepting the Duolingo uh, test because that can be administered from home. Uh, but uh, usually IELTS or TOEFL, you need a 6.5 in IELTS for many of the programs and uh, Duolingo, one, one, 110. But if you don't meet those requirements, if you get a six or a 5.5, um, you can still join the uh, Langara's EAP program, uh, study to increase your level of English, and then you can, in some programs, you can get conditional admission to the regular studies program. So you start with LEAP, increase your English capability, and then you transfer to a regular studies program. Um, Gregory, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, yep. you have about 10 minutes left. So if you can yep, I'm, check out the yep, questions. I'm, Yep, I'm finishing up right now, okay? Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. Just give me two minutes, yeah. Okay, so uh, just finally, uh, new programs. Uh, some of these include uh, animation. So we have this Langara Center, Langara College Center for Entertainment Arts, and uh, including animation, advanced 3D animation, visual effects, game design, game technology. And, uh, you know, we also have, in that case, the main, the main requirement is you do need a portfolio. Okay, so you must be art minded or you have some portfolio uh, to be considered for these programs. Okay, so just for the sake of time, how to apply, we do have um, application through the Langara uh, Education Planner BC website. And also uh, first the continuing studies program or LEAP, uh, we have a PDF form, paper form, uh, like a PDF fillable form. And, uh, you know, for this one, you apply through EPBC. This one you upload into the fee portal site and uh, then our admissions will receive it with your documents. Um, procedure, we need your proof of graduation. If your certificate or transcripts are in Turkish, then we need those uh, notarized uh, English translations. You can see IELTS or TOEFL for the English proficiency. As I mentioned, now we take Duolingo. And these are additional requirements for some of the programs, not all, it will depend on the program. And uh, document evaluation, we're kind of up to date. Uh, it won't take four to six weeks now, but, um, and then, uh, but it could be could a lot sooner. Offer letters issued, and then we require the initial tuition deposit of uh, $6,000. Once you pay the $6,000 and Langara receives that, then uh, Langara, um, International Education Admissions Department will issue the official letter of acceptance, which you need to apply for your Canada study permit and Canada study visa. Okay, so uh, I'll just um, stop there for some questions. Um, this is, um, you can email me. This is my email, gpacorni at langara.ca or international at langara. Uh, and you can download brochures and you can learn more from our website. So I think I'll take uh, now if um, take some questions. Um, uh, I don't know how their how the question format will be, but um, yeah. So thank you for your attention, and uh, let's open it up for questions. Um, Gregory, you can stop sharing your screen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now you should be able to see the questions on the questions tab. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. I'm clicking on the questions, but I don't see any questions that are not coming up. Um, my screen just froze, so I need to refresh my page. Just a second. Okay.
Okay, so um, I can read you the questions if you want. There are two questions. Okay, yeah, because I can't, I can't see them. I can't open that box. Okay. Uh, the first one says, for PhD and postdoc, what is the criteria for applying? Uh, which programs do you have? Okay, so as I, as I mentioned, I don't know, maybe I wasn't clear. Um, you know, Langara is a college. So uh, in Canada, the uh, PhD or postdoc, those are administered by universities and Langara is not a university. So the only higher diplomas that we have are called post degree diploma. So if you, I, I imagine this person who's asking this probably already has a master's degree and is looking for PhD or postdoc. Uh, this is, I, I'm sorry, but this is not for Langara. I mean, we don't, we only have the post degree diploma. It's not even a master's degree. So um, I, we don't have the criteria because we don't have those programs. Right. And the second question is, I'm a student in German high school in Istanbul. I want to attend to psychology. What are the requirements for psychology department for international students? Okay, so, yeah, very good question. Um, so the person, uh, basically, they're in, if, if you're in your last year of high school, so if you want to study psychology, we have the, um, as I mentioned, university transfer where the student can start at Langara. We do have psychology major. So we have psychology, sociology, these courses. And the student would require just their high school graduation. So I, I think if the student is in their final year at the German high school in Turkey, then we need that. We need your final um, you know, high school diploma or high school certificate. We need the transcript. So I don't know if the transcript's in German or if it's in Turkish or if it's issued in English, but we need, uh, we need if, it's, if it's in German or Turkish, we need a copy of that and we need a copy of the notarized English translation. And usually I didn't, I forgot to mention this to the students, but when you're scanning documents, if you do apply, you do have to scan uh, from the original transcript or document and scan in full color. So not no, don't make a black and white copy and then and then scan it. It won't be accepted. So it has to be a full scan in color. Um, for this student who wants to study psychology, we just need we need um, high school graduation. We need the transcript and we need their English. Uh, you know, um, so if they've done IELTS or TOEFL or as I mentioned, now we accept Duolingo uh, as our English requirement, and that's all. Um, you know, we know that the student can come to Langara. Uh, you know, they graduated, they're going to have to study hard to do the uh, university transfer, but they have that pathway, that stepping stone. So it's, it's very possible for the student. All right, great. And the last question is, does a certificate program provide work permit to us in Canada? Certificate. Okay, so uh, Langara has about, um, let me just double check, we have about eight We have 10 certificate, one year certificate programs. Uh, and uh, these are one year certificate. Uh, the, what that means is in Canada, the policy is if you um, do whatever your study period is, it's matched by the work permit. So uh, except for the two year, the two year diploma, then you're eligible for three year post-grad work permit. For one year certificate, you're eligible one to one. So one year, you're eligible for a one year postgraduate work permit. So that way it's a little bit more beneficial if you do a two-year diploma because you're getting a three-year postgraduate work permit. Whereas if you do one year certificate, you're only getting, you're just matching it. You're getting one year of postgraduate work permit. All right, thank you so much, Gregory. These are great information and I'm sure the uh, students fits in from these. Um, do you have anything else that you wanna add? Yeah, I just, um, we just, as I mentioned, I, I think I alluded to, I know we have not much, much time, but just give me a, one more minute. So I think that, um, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty because of uh, COVID-19, of course, across the world. And, uh, you know, Canada is no different. Uh, we are trying to work with our partners and with um, our uh, student applicants to keep them informed. A lot of updates are on our website. Uh, for the uh, going forward, but obviously we have to follow the provincial health authorities and their guidelines. So Langara just announced yesterday that probably many of the courses for the fall, for September, 
will be issued and will be delivered online. How that looks for, you know, we don't know about the travel restrictions, but because of social distancing and physical distancing, uh, if the students are here, they may start from studying from home, but if they stay in Turkey or in their home country, uh, that could be uh, that could be possible as well. So we just have to wait and hear about that. But uh, we are trying to be in, um, inform all potential applicants and students, and we you know we hope that everybody stays safe and uh, you know we get through this, and then uh, you know after this uh, uh, things will open up, and we welcome you to Langara. So thank you for your attention, everybody. Thank you so much for participating, Gregory. We'll see you in okay, Turkey well, hopefully soon. Yes, I hope so too. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye.